Okay, section 3.2, mean and variance of a geometric distribution. Um, before we go into this, this might be a good point for you to uh, recap and revise how to find the uh, mean and variance of a binomial distribution. So just remind yourselves how you do that. Um, how you find the mean and variance of a uh, Poisson distribution and also what you use for the mean and variance when you are approximating a binomial using a normal distribution. So this will be a good point to remind yourself uh, how do you find the mean and variance of a binomial how do you find the mean and variance of a Poisson? Very, very easy, you should remember that. And how, when you are approximating a, a binomial distribution with a normal, what do you use for the mean and variance? Now this, I think, is a very straightforward um, section. So what we're going to be doing here is working out the mean and variance of this geometric distribution. So you can see the formula here, I'll write it out again. So the mean of this we use e of x just like we did for um, the uh, discrete distribution oh that'll be another one to remember the discrete one find yourself how you how you do that find a mean and variance of that so e of x you've come across this before which is the mean and that's just one over the probability of success and the variance now, do you remember var x and the discrete probability distribution or discrete random variables? So, variance that's the symbol that we use sigma squared, and that is uh, probability of failure over success squared. Now, there is a table in the formula book, I think on page 23 that gives you the mean and variances for all of these different distributions but it's useful to remember them because in an exam it will just save you time you'll be able to just get straight into the question without having to uh, flick through the formula book right dorothy flops not dorothy flops dorothy flips a bias coin until it lands on heads so there we know it's a geometric distribution yeah you're doing something until success occurs should we call it a total number of flips or flops y given that uh, the mean of y is 2.5 what we want to do is to find the probability uh, of the coin landing on heads on a single flip the standard deviation um, of y okay so um, as i've set up there uh, we're using the random variable y, and that's our uh, geometric uh, distribution. We're trying to find uh, p, but we're told that the mean of x is 2.5, and to find the mean, we do 1 over p. Very, very easy. So p is going to equal 1 over 2.5. 1 divided by 2.5, we get 0 0.4. So remember, probability we shouldn't get an answer bigger than one. If you do, I'd go back and check your working. You haven't done, you know, you've done something wrong. Right, if we want to find the standard deviation, well, we're going to have to find var x and then find the square root of var x. Now, var x is equal to um, 1 minus p, so that's going to be 1 minus 0 0.4 divided by p squared, so 0 0.4 squared. So that's going to be 0 0.6 over, I think that's 0 0.016, 0 0.4 squared. Yeah, 0 0.16. So 0.6 divided by 0.16, I'll get 15 over 4. So that means that the standard deviation 
standard deviation is going to be well without a calculator I could write root 15 over 2 like that um, uh, not standard deviation sorry no squared there um, so let's do square root 15 over 4 and we're going to get at 1.9 um, 1.9 one one of our three significant figures uh, so we'll give our answer as 1.94 I should now be able to do exercise 3b on pages 47 to 49 of the textbook. And here's just the formula again our mean is 1 over p, our variance is 1 minus p over p squared, again in the formula book.